Hi, my name's Dan, and in this video, we're going to go through the biggest new features in the Bookstack June 2022 release. Let's jump in. So the first thing that I want to show is the ability to now promote a chapter to a book. I've got this server systems chapter here within this ID department book, and let's convert this into a book. So previously, you'd have to create a book manually and then move all these pages in um, either one by one or by sorting the book. What we can now do, if we go to the edit page, we'll now see an option down at the bottom here, convert to book. If we click on that. I would say uh, take into account this uh, any advisories within this section, because some of them are quite important, especially if you use permissions within your system. But we're going to go ahead, convert chapter. Yep, let's confirm that. And now we have our server systems as a book with all those original pages within that. So upon promoting ch chapters to a book, you can also convert books to shelves now. So I've just made some tweaks to the server systems uh, book that, that we originally converted from a chapter uh, just to have a chapter of its own. So now we've got a book server systems with two pages in it. And then that has a admin servers chapter with a page within that. So what we can do, if we go to the edit page of this book now, we can have the option to convert it to a shelf. So if we choose to convert this book and then confirm that, we can now see this server systems, uh, what was previously a book has now become a shelf. And we'll see within that we've got the admin servers. So that was previously a chapter. So that chapter has been promoted to a book within that. So everything's moved up one. Within that is the page that was was originally within there. But we can also see that we've got this server systems pages book, and that contains everything that was a direct page of the original book that we converted, just to keep them within there because shelves can't contain pages themselves. So overall, these couple of conversion features should make it much easier to kind of organize your hierarchy when you need to start moving things up. The next feature that I want to show you is auto initiation for when you're using only an open ID connect or SAML2 authentication system. So previously, when you were using one of those authentication systems, you'd see a login screen much like this, where the user would come here and then you'd have to click through again to then go through the authentication process. Now you can enable a single option within your um, .env file, much like all the other ones. And that looks like this. And then when that's enabled, if I just click to this uh, back to the home page, it will start that authentication flow when it tries to put me back onto the login screen. So you'll see a little loading view like that. And that's automatically communicating with the authentication system. And then it's auto starting that redirect process that would usually occur when the user clicks the button. So a nice little improvement that saves an extra step and provides a much more seamless experience. Again, that only is enabled when you're using the SAML2 or OpenID Connect authentication systems with no other authentication options active. Next up is some improvements to the WYSIWYG code editor. So here we have a block of code within the WYSIWYG editor. We open this up, we can see this interface has now changed. The language list, which used to be a list up at the top here, has now been made into this sidebar, and this automatically scrolls and highlights as you type. Type P is going to highlight all the ones starting with P, R, and so on. So this is some PHP code. And again, you can still click the items in the sidebar as you would click the options before. But now it just provides a bit of a nicer experience and it expands a bit better for as we add new languages. On the right hand side, we've also got a much larger editing area to be able to manipulate our code much easier. For the next change, I want to go over some of the user interface improvements that have been made in this release cycle. A lot of the paddings, margins, and hover styles have been made consistent across the app and just nicer in general. For example, the header areas now nicely highlight that whole section instead of having very basic uh, hover styles. In addition, the animations have been made smoother as well in multiple areas to just provide a nicer overall experience. There's been a couple of more significant changes to note, such as if we go to the settings and go to customization, the custom HTML head content option is now an editable code block. So you get full syntax HTML highlighting within here, which makes it much easier to spot any errors. If we go back to the page that we were on, attachments, now when you hover over them, at least the file ones, such as this one, 
will have a drop down on the right hand side. This allows you to access a couple of options. So there's the download option, which is the same as clicking the attachment in that the browser forces a download like that. Alternatively, you can now easily access the open a new tab option, which will open that file within the browser if the browser supports it and if the file type is deemed safe. So this was an option that was previously accessible, but very awkward because you'd have to press a keyboard combination or you'd have to manually alter the URL yourself for the attachment. So now it should make it much easier to access when needed. The Markdown editor has received some updates this release with the preview output being made much more efficient in terms of when you make updates. So now as changes are made to the Markdown content itself, only the changed areas within the preview output are actually altered providing much better performance when making large changes or when you have embedded content within your output. Now for users of the visual theme system, some of the templates have received updates. The exports templates have been reorganized into their own directory. So here we have the exports folder and then within there we have the main templates used by each type and then that's broken down much more now into different parts. So let's do a quick example of overriding this page export template. And we can see this is in exports and then page.blade.php. So if we copy this and we'll go to our pre-configured theme area and then I'll create a new file to match the structure. So exports and then let's paste that in there. And then in just above all the content, maybe you want to add our company name. Like something like that. And then that should override that file. So if we jump back to the browser, I'll export this page. And now we can see we've overridden that template. On a similar note, we now have some extra templates specifically designed to help users of the visual theme system. Within layouts and parts, you'll find a couple of new templates within here, base body start and base body end. It could be quite common that people needed to edit areas within the start of the body tag or right at the end of the body tag within the HTML structure. So these are new templates that are empty by default, but these are, allow you to override those sections of the base template that's used in pretty much every area that provides a standard looks like view. Now, as usual, there's been a whole bunch of translation updates. So this list just shows the amount of uh, different people that have contributed translations for all these different languages. So a massive thank you to everyone on this list. So that covers everything in the June 2022 release of Bookstack. For the next release cycle, things are going to be probably focused on looking at the next element within the roadmap, which comes down to permissions and looking at how we can address things that have risen up over the last seven years around the permission system. On that, there'll be some few standard maintenance features such as updating the libraries used by the WYSIWYG code editor and also the code mirror uh, instance for code blocks and the markdown editor. One extra thing that I want to mention is that I've opened a new proposal on GitHub that goes over the um, how URLs are formed for core content such as books, chapters and shelves. Um, so I've put out a proposal here it's very much draft, just putting my thoughts out there, but any feedback would be greatly um, welcomed. So that's everything that I had to cover. I'll put a link to the uh, URL proposal within the description, in addition to a link to this blog post where you can find much more detail about the update. But that's everything. So thank you very much for watching and have a great day.